What is this? All right, so I'm going to start here from the basics of what we got. The software is what again? It's called 3D Reshaper. Oh, okay. So this was a point cloud we got from the drone. So this was from the Unique. It is a dam that's been uh, remodeled. You can see this, this used to be the dam structure here. Mm -hmm. And I can see it on the side a little easier. Mm -hmm. But they purposely um, uh, breached it. Breached it. Because uh, they're going to redo it. Um, so you can see stuff like the detail, like the vegetation is pretty clear. These are some tractors that got caught in there. Oh, wow. Where is that? Uh, this is somewhere near Alamogordo. What piece of equipment was this being used with? What, do you mean? what piece of equipment? That one? Oh, no, was or this one? This one? Okay. The survey was done with this. Okay. Um, and I can show you this in Edge Software where we got this from. But it was done, I think we did seven control points on it. Um, most of them on the outside, a couple on the inside. What Paul was talking about here, usually when we think of ground control, I like to think of it like localizing with the GPS where you put points on the outside, but you also need kind of points in the middle to kind of surround your site with enough control to tie everything down accurately mm, enough. Kind of like having base stations that you Basically. Um, so that's the original data. What 3D Reshaper allows me to do is, instead of doing it by classification, mm -hmm. it basically analyzes the surface and tries to get rid of anything that's not on the surface. Huh. So I did a couple different ones. This I couldn't is, agree with you more, though, about PIX40's inability to classify well. It, it, you really have to go in and paint the points on if you have vegetation and whatnot. So you can see that's the that's what it took out versus what was originally there. So like these oh, tractors just ground away. shots. It took the ground shots. Basically, yes. Okay. So it does an analysis. It's not because what PIX40 and other programs look for is if it's if it looks like vegetation or not. It does for by the look of it. Not everything oh. works out that way, especially in New Mexico where. Mm -hmm. The difference between the ground and the vegetation is not always this, you know, that much of a difference. But this software it analyzes the surface and takes away anything that's just not on the surface. Mm -hmm. So I did that, and that's what we ended up with in terms of a ground surface. You can see it's pretty clean. So what I did was I had the customer go out and take uh, a survey with their GPS. And what they ended up with was this. So these are the points that they took with their GPS unit. Okay, what did they use? Uh, this is a Topcon unit they have. Uh, top it's a survey grade. Robotic? Topcon. Top uh, See, there's, there's three major manufacturers of survey equipment, like a Trimble Topcon. Gotcha. Trimble, you're right, they're expensive, but they're kind of still about the, the leading Because they're easy there. and convenient to use, right? I, I don't even think they're that easy to use. Really? They're, they're just, they were the first, so they tend to be the most popular. Gotcha. So you can see that's the survey points they did, okay. and I can compare that against the... Okay, so how long did it take points? them to do that survey, and how long did it take you to do your survey? This was probably about a 15-minute flight. How many acres is it? Uh, I'd have to measure it. Oh, I don't right. know. So 15 It's probably minutes. in the 7 to 8 acre range, I would guess. Okay. Um, I don't know how long it took them to do the GPS survey. Probably, you know, a couple hours, I sure. think. But the other thing, too, to understand is that when you fly a survey mission, it's not just about flying, it's about processing. So when you ask the question, how much time does it take, you're asking him how much time in the field did it to take. Fly it. Because there's yeah. always that post processing, and the post processing is typically the most time insensitive. Okay. Time sen sensitive. Yeah. And so this might have been a 15 minute flight, but I think I processed his data in an hour and a half yeah, okay. to get to where I could have a point cloud like this. It's still way less field time. Yeah, I mean, you, it would have you, taken probably you do two shift hours. more toward the office. He's absolutely right. Processing can take a while depending on how many photos you did and how big the site was. Mm -hmm. In PhotoScan, can you make templates for the type of processing? Yes. Okay, you can that's do what's called a batch, cool. where you just set up all your batches to be, you know, whatever steps that you want it to be. So you can do a batch and have it go through. That's one of the cool things about Pix4D is it kind of automatically does that. Mm -hmm. Agisoft does it, but you got to go in kind of the background and look at it because it's not immediately obvious how it does it. Um, all right, so what I did was I took this surface and actually converted it to a mesh. What 3D Reshaper is really good at is meshing. Oh, wow. So this is all those individual point cloud meshed together to create a surface. Mm -hmm. So now that I've got a surface, what I also did was I converted the customer's data, that mm -hmm. point cloud, yeah. into its own mesh as well. Mm -hmm. So now this is the data. You can tell it's far less dense yeah. versus the data from the drone. Yeah. But this software actually allows me to take the two surfaces and, and put them right next to each other. Okay, and what was the difference? So the end, next step, the last step is to actually do a comparison between the surfaces, mm. where I can take two surfaces, have it compare them, mm. and then create, where is my measured cloud? Sorry. I'm trying to pull up a mesh to show, uh, show you some meshes we've done. So 
So what you're looking at here is a color map. Okay. Showing the difference between, I'm gonna get rid of my labels here just so they're not in the way. So the kind of grayish was the one from the GPS. Mm -hmm. And what I did is this is now overlaying both meshes on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And then the color is depending on how much difference is between the two surfaces. So you can say 97% of the data is in about this one foot range. And when it gets toward the yellow, it's getting more toward three feet. Now those areas where it's less accurate, that's where all those trees were. How do you know it's one foot? Um, it, it shows you this range, but oh. if you actually want to do an inspection, what you can do is, now this is a little different because it's not comparing apples to apples and comparing some arbitrary points to this data. So it's never going to totally match. But I can just grab this and click on any point and it'll actually show me. But did you use just one of their benchmarks or something? How to use it. Like, but I'll get, I have your to email. make it roll to survey. I'm using it in San Diego. Do I need to change the, the coordinate system or the Why network system? It should require you change comparison. I can just click on it and it shows me the, the comparison two. x, y, and z okay. between yeah. that surface yeah. taken from the GPS versus the surface straps, taken so from the drone. So half a foot or 0.573 on now, this again, one. Yeah. Because I'm taking okay. some arbitrary points gotcha. to the GPS, yeah. and this is far well, more detailed, um, I'm, I'm not going to hit the exact same point as the GPS. Yeah. Yeah. So what I actually want to do next so is find a way to do this, where I can take like his point data and compare it directly to my surface, see actually how accurate it is. So that's where I got this kind of comparison. You can see that they're just points. So in between here, there's no data, so it's interpolating between the points. So it's not giving me a true accuracy Apples to apples. Yeah, the datums are off. They're not the same. You could mesh them. Like in AutoCAD, you, if you bring two separate surveys, yeah, you, you just make sure that they're the same grid uh, grid system or real world and these, system. And these are, but this is so much less detailed than the data oh, I got from the drone. I see. In between these points, I've got data from the drone where I don't have data here. Understood. So it's trying to interpolate the difference between I the two. That makes and sense. And it's not matching. So what I want to do is I want to take these points and directly compare them to my surface, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Okay. But so we can see the accuracy is pretty good. I mean, yeah. for some of those points, I was, you know, getting close to that error that you you're looking for. Sure. I'm a little concerned that maybe a little too tight for something like this, where we might have to take a look at the Leica drone okay. to get that extra level of accuracy.